Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, I'm going to hack this UPS in this cabinet and make it run for a ridiculous amount of time. This is a project that I've been wanting to do for probably 20 years now. A long time ago, my grandpa gave me six golf cart batteries, which we both thought were bad when in fact they actually weren't. I kind of took them for granted at the time, but I used to plug my inverter and things into them and run TVs and stuff for an ungodly amount of time. Well, lately the power's been going out a decent bit, probably more in the last four months than it has in the last four years that we've lived here. And on this UPS is our main TV and our router for our internet, two things we'd really like to have when the power goes out. Problem is, the little 12-volt uh, SLA batteries are 7 amp hours, and they don't really last as long as we would like. And so, we're going to hook up some deep cycle batteries to this UPS, and hopefully make it run for a very long time. As you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm obsessed with non-grid power. And batteries and things are just one of the things I happen to love. And so let's get going with this project. Okay, this is the battery I was considering. The 24DDC from Sam's. It's a marine deep cycle battery. I'm not going to use it to cold crank anything, of course, but its a 20 amp hour rate is 75 amp hours. Now most batteries, if they're not specified, is specified at a 20 amp, uh, a 20 hour rate, which I don't know why, but what this means is 75, if you discharge this over 20 hours, we can get 3.75 amps per hour and get the expected capacity. Now if I discharge it faster, I'm gonna get far less runtime. Just like, you know, if you drive your car faster, your gas tank isn't going to last as long. These two specs here for my purposes are pretty well meaningless. The UPS is currently saying that it's putting out 76 watts to the router and the TV at 124 volts out of the wall. This corresponds to watts over volts, uh, 613 milliamps, which is, seems about right. The battery though, of course, is only gonna put out 24 volts. When the volts drop, the amps have to go up. The volts are dropping by a factor of 5.16, about five and a sixth, and therefore the amps are going up by that amount. So I'm expecting to see an amp draw on the battery of three and a sixth, give or take. Uh, oddly enough, the kilowatt that I had the UPS plugged into, uh, 24 watts are going to run the UPS itself and charge batteries. So, but that's not important once it's on battery power. So the potential runtime for this uh, is actually a little bit longer than I may expect. Uh, my effective capacity here is gonna be the amp draw over the 20 hour rate amp draw. If I put these in parentheses here, it's gonna give us uh, 84%. So I might get a little bit more than my expected capacity of 75 amp hours. So if we take 75 divided by this number, it's gonna give us a bigger number. Let's see what that's gonna be. Oh, look at that. Now that's not necessarily likely, but since I'm discharging my battery slower than the 20 amp hour rate, I might get a little bit more. But what this tells me is I should theoretically be able to get at least 20 hours of runtime on battery backup, which is awesome. So I'm gonna use some wire I've already got. This is just 10 gauge stranded ground wire. This is gonna be the wire that connects the two batteries in series. This terminal here is made for six gauge and that's why I had to fold this wire over to make it you know, fit tight. I had a three, uh, three eight stud on the battery and that's the size of the terminal I could find. Let me uh, scoot that back there a little bit before I crimp it and then I'll do the same thing to the other end. It's only about a foot long. Right now on standby I've got 242 minutes of runtime with the uh, SLA batteries in there with just the router. So we turn it off and unplug everything and then remove this cover here and pull these two batteries out. These are 12 volt SLA batteries in series. They're 7 amp hours so it doesn't run forever. My extra set of hands here is pulling them out. They're a little bit heavier than he expected, I think. Okay, cool. So we gotta find out which one of these terminals is positive because we don't wanna wire it backwards. 26 volts, hmm, a little more than I expected. So that one's positive. So let's get a Sharpie here and mark it as such so that I know. And then obviously mark the terminals down inside there. I had these covered up for safety here. Now these green wires I intended to use first didn't work. They were simply too stiff to twist the way I wanted them, and the terminals don't fit. These, I needed quarter inch spades, not these ones. So, then I ended up drilling a hole in the battery cover here near the end, and then cutting a slot out of it so that 
I could use uh, my plan B wire, which is simply a thick extension cord. And I, I'm not using the ground. But then the magic here is using this hose clamp to keep it from slipping out of the slot because I certainly don't want these terminals pulling out and then possibly touching each other and then shorting out my two giant batteries. That would be awful. So, look at that, perfect. All right, that's not gonna come out. And that, yep, that looks good. All right, and so, my extra set of hands here is now plugging in these spade terminals. Normally, UPSs have leads, but this one didn't. It just has a socket, which I don't really like. Leads would have been easier. And so then we can make sure that that hose clamp is inside there and snap it shut. Perfect, look at that, slick. Okay, and we'll put it back in place here. And then it's time to move on to actually connecting the batteries. We've got the negative here on first. You can see they're already connected in series. Alex gets them finger tight and then I'll wrench them. Now he's removing the tape that we put around the positive terminal because we didn't want these touching, obviously, connected to the UPS. That could damage the UPS. And we certainly didn't want to connect these first and then because the spade terminals could short out, you know, inside the UPS, so that'd be terrible. And this 10 amp inline fuse here acts as a final connection and of course protection against any short circuits. And these aren't entirely charged up to the level the previous ones were. So we're only showing 26 minutes here with the TV and the router on. It finally stabilized at 19 minutes, which was kind of disappointing. However, let's check this out here. That's not true. We've got 24 and a half volts, so the batteries are charged. That's good. We just won't obey the meter at the moment. We know that it's lying to us. Because the UPS really has no idea how big these batteries really are. Now on battery, it's pulling more amps than I expected, but still below the 10 amp fuse, so we're good. And after three days on the UPS, you can see where our meter is now. So here's why I didn't use golf cart batteries. You can either get them in six volts or eight volts. I need 24 volts. With six volt batteries, I have to get four of them. They're heavy, they take up a lot of space, and I have to buy four of them. I didn't get eight volt batteries because, well, I still need three of them. And that's really a lot of overkill. And there's no way to possibly get 12 volts out of these. A lot of things I do require 12 volts, and I may not use these batteries for just this. I may want to run the inverter off them, or who knows what. But the 6 volts give me the combination of 12, whereas the 8s do not. And I still have to buy three of them. So I went with marine batteries because, uh, I mean, they're going to be good enough, I think, for what I'm doing. I only have to buy two of them. They're each 12 volts, and they have a decent bit of deep cycle capability. And, of course, I only have to buy two instead of three or four. And it's super simple to add on later if I want to add capacity. Well, you can see that really wasn't all that difficult. It was an awful lot of fun. And now what essentially is 20 years or so in the making is finally done. I hope that when the power goes out, we'll have TV and internet all night long and then some. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson and thanks for watching. And that's Alex. We really appreciate it. He helped too, didn't you?